Welcome back. Let's do a quick Sunday show. So we lots been going. Well, there's always a lot going on now, right? <laughs> it's like something new every week. You guys just have to stay cool because the biggest opportunities are when there's blood in the streets, right? When there's just crazy volatility and you know the world's an uncertain place. First of all, not financial advice. Consult your licensed financial advisor. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Do not invest in anything you're not willing to lose or lose sleep over. Okay. The futures right now, so it's Sunday night in the U.S., they're down. Okay. And I believe they are down because uh, this is a free chat group if you guys want to come in here. where Here's the newsroom. You guys should all be in there. It's like, what, 500 in the free and then only 253 in the news. Anyways, I posted this on Twitter. It was breaking news a few hours ago. But um, NATO countries have a green light to send fighter jets into Ukraine. That's probably, <laughs> you know, not good. Not good at all, right? Uh, that's going to start. That's escalating. it. They're, they're just going to keep escalating it. And I've... You know, it's the perfect perfect excuse for the markets. Strategic location. I've gone through that in my previous video, right? So things are going to get choppy. Now things, when they get choppy, there are opportunities for people who trade, right? Or at least you want to position yourself prior and you want to benefit off of it. And for the most part, though, you want to hedge against it so you don't get wrecked and annihilated so the stock market's right across the board vix is up everything's green everything's up let's take a look at crypto real quick it's getting annihilated bitcoin's at thirty-eight thousand. well not not annihilated but i've uh we're gonna look at crypto we're gonna look at everything in this video it's not gonna be just uh the market so there here's the thing i see a lot of opportunity coming up this spring and summer major swings major opportunities okay um i know a lot of people are worried about this which is hex it's down about 80 percent from its all-time high it's been in a bear for 167 days okay but you know relatively if you zoom out for the people you know like in my private group who got got in you know since day one it's all right Although, you know, let's just say a lot of us are down massively, like in dollar value, but that doesn't matter. Listen, it's all emotions. It's nothing else. That's all it is. Um, everyone thought Paul's chain would have been out by now. Whatever. It doesn't matter. What has changed? Nothing. It's just people's emotions. Um, I'm actually hoping this thing drops much further. I, I would love, love to see a penny again. I would love it. And listen, guys, I never cashed out. I've taken funds and I've funded, sponsored things to onboard. But I've never, you know, you don't see me flexing with Louie or a Lambo, right? So, but I, I have an understanding of what this is, where it's going, and what the possibilities are going to be. Look, look what supply it's dwindling okay it's really low and um the supply coming onto the market is from stakes and emergency and stakes and then the price goes lower and we don't have any buyers people are tapped out people have to pay taxes and um and so forth and people are chasing other things other shiny objects there's a bunch of project new projects coming out they're chasing that and they're cha and honestly I'm just going to say this. I don't want to give too much away, right? <laughs> so that's the thing. Like, I, these are free videos. So here's what I'm doing. Um, I'm doing a fire sale. You want to join the private group and get the good stuff? Now's your chance. Huge discount. It's usually around 220 bucks, 250 $49. Limited time. 
and it pays for itself. I made a lot of millionaires, guys. Like, I, I don't want, I don't like bragging, but I made a lot of people rich, including myself, in the past couple of years. All right, because I could find opportunities. I've made some fantastic calls. I'm constantly making calls for the stock market. And, you know, it's not just crypto that's going to make us super wealthy. It is metals and mining stocks. So I'm going to talk about that. Take advantage of this. It should pay for itself. If you're not satisfied, whatever. But it's 40, we're looking at 49 bucks to join and then $20 a month to stay in the private group. And you know what? There's always a few months where it's boring. And then all of a sudden, the opportunities are there. Where you get, you know, massive life-changing swings and trades. I called the top to the stock market pretty much. Like, I keep, I keep making calls that nobody else does. Not just in crypto. Well, in crypto, they haven't been that great lately. But it doesn't matter. But... In the stock market, I've been very, very good. Now, I can't promise I could constantly deliver the best calls ever. And they're not always that great. I thought uh, mining stocks were going to go up in uh, early 2021 last year. They didn't. It was a horrible brain, uh, bear market. But you know what? At least I got to see which which stocks, which companies held up during a horrible bear market right for uh the commodity sec sector and uh the mining stocks but now a lot of them have gone up not but not all but the opportunity is still there i'll show you guys in a second so take advantage of this 49 bucks like it's usually over 200 pays for itself good no promises but like i said a lot of people have done really really well like life changing, right? Pays for itself. All right. So where was I? Crypto. And it all ties together. It's all macro. Okay. So I'm looking at the geopolitical stuff going on. I'm looking at the yield curve. I'm looking at um all sorts of things, right? I'm looking at like the ARC fund. I'm looking at what's going to blow up next. Uh, Russia's taking off the SWIFT banking system. Uh, we just did like a, a 100% rally. Commodities don't ever do that. Oil is over $100 a barrel. Uh, inflation's running high. Supply chain's wobbly. There's so much going on. I feel like... And then there's rate hikes coming, supposedly, in the next week or so. There's so much going on. I cannot make a video explaining it all where, like, it's not going to be like a four hour video and I don't want to do that. I just don't. I'm, you know, I'm too busy actually trading and doing. So I'm just going to cover, I'm going to lightly go over everything lightly. Okay. And that's what the private group's for. So, all right, let's, we'll look at crypto and then we'll look at uh, the market and everything else. TA wise, Bitcoin looks oversold on the weekly. It does. Does that mean it's going to rebound and recover? I, you know, I don't think so. I think we're still due to drop, like, at least, at least to the 200-week moving average. Take you to 20,000. Why is that? It's sort of correlated to the stock market. There's more downside coming for the stock market. Why? I mean, there's a lot of reasons. Possible rate hikes possible one of these something's gonna break long-term capital management whatever that was called in the late 1999 in the 2000 uh year right before the dot-com bubble pop that thing broke it, it was like this uh hedge fund with ai algos whatever but it was big and it had a lot of money um in it a lot of capital in it like billions back then that was worth more uh, that blew up because something happened geopolitically in Asia. Okay, well, what's happening now is much greater than that, right? And everyone is so over leveraged. On top of that, we have massive inflation, but it's also due to shortages of um, raw materials like fertilizer. Well, you know... The West put sanctions on Russia. Well, they're going to stop shipping fertilizer. 
and we apparently just stopped buying oil from them, although we're no longer independent. That So when gas goes up, you have wheat. Well, the wheat is going to affect the rest of the world, not so much the U.S., but when you have commodities exploding in price, in price like this, and gasoline, which when you need oil and gasoline to ship everything, which also disrupts the supply chain, which is already kind of disrupted permanently from all the lockdowns, prices are going to just keep going up. <laughs> and, but So here's what's the complexity of it all, right? As prices go up, people can't afford to buy things they could only buy the necessities like food right and gas to go to work but at some point you know everything else they stop buying um your discretionary spending just disappears vanishes and then uh and then they start cutting back right on i don't know netflix hopefully um all kinds of subscriptions and whatnot and then they start cutting back on what's next, on vacations. And then they start cutting back on everything they have to, because they have to at this point in the U.S. But, uh, and in Europe. And utility price, you know, utilities are going up. Now, at the same time, how is this going to affect the market? I, I believe some people are going to start selling stocks and they're going to start selling cryptos to live. What does that do? Bear market. It, it's risk off. It is what it is. So why not? Not just that, there's still a lot of stupid shit in crypto. The, the apes are still going, the NFTs, all this garbage. Um, a, lot, a lot of these degens need to get washed out. They do. Um, and these are my theories and my fundamentals, sort of, right? Um, on top of that, again, things are escalating geopolitically-wise, right? And... I think the powers to be want that. They, well, they definitely do. They're doing it um, from both sides, all sides, whatever. And for the central bank, right, for Powell, that'll be the perfect excuse to either only do one rate hike, one and done, or call it off. Now, because he calls off the rate hikes, will that stop the market from plunging? No, it won't because they have to actually print more. Now, there is printing in the background, autopilot. What is, which is quantitative easing, but is that enough to keep the markets up? I don't, I don't believe so. It'll keep it maybe somewhat sideways, then down, somewhat sideways, then down. It, I'm just thinking out loud, guys. Anyways, the moral of the story is I think there's more downside for crypto. I just do. And the weekly looks like a buy with all my blue candles, but look, I, there's no real support. The minute, okay. The minute Bitcoin falls below 35,000, it's going straight to like 28,000. And that might not even hold it. It's just an airdrop to the 200 week moving average. And that should flush out a lot of people. It might even wake down to like 14, 15,000. I mean, right here, obviously, this is a head and shoulder type uh, pattern that already played out, fell down to 33,000. But this, if. You just want to draw, it's, that looks horrible, but here, let me blow it up. Give me a second. This is a bearish pennant. Give me a second. Let me zoom in. Let me take it to the three day chart. All right, here, bearish pennant. And then it's going to, I'm expecting a draw. All right. And the rest of the crypto market should go with it. Hopefully, so will Hex. The thing with Hex is it's, you know, on the weekly, next week we'll get a nine count buy signal. On the three day, it's at a seven count, so maybe six more days downside. On the daily, it's on a six count, seven, eight, nine, so three more days. But here's the thing none of this shit matters if uh, Bitcoin's crashing like another 50%. And I believe there's more downside to come, more pain. But, does, but you should be happy if you've listened to me. If you're staked, you're buying the dip every day. So let's say two to three, maybe four more weeks of downside. Maybe more because Pulse Chain might take a few more months. Maybe it won't come out till summer. Maybe till 2023, early. I don't know. I have no idea. But, I mean, Testnet 3 should come out when that comes out. Then we know we have probably, a, you know, it's coming. Like, when Testnet 3 is out, 
maybe four weeks of testing, something like that, and then it just launches. But we're not there yet. But that is the next step. Anyways, if you bought the all-time high, right, the top, your stakes bought you the dip every single day for 168 days. So you've been buying the dip. If you literally bought the top and you staked, you've been buying the dip every single day. If you bought earlier, I mean, you've been buying the highs and the lows this entire time. And again, does it matter in the end if X goes to a dollar or five or ten or whatever? No. This is just, you know, this is what happens in crypto. Dips are in the game and they could happen. Can we get a 90% dump? Absolutely. Why not? I would love it. Love it. 90% takes you to five cents. What would a 95% look like? That'd be awesome. Oh boy. <laughs> Let's just do a 90, 94%, whatever. Uh, wait, let me do it again. Take, so a 93% takes you around 0, 0.0, takes you 3 cents. That'd be fantastic. What would take us to a uh, A 96% drop would take us to a, like around a penny. I, doubt, I highly doubt that'll happen. I've, I'd absolutely love for that to happen, but you know. Yeah, so this week just switched over, and I got a buy signal on the weekly. But, you know, I don't know. Sentiment's pretty bad. I do think uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum will drop. Now, I could be wrong, right? But and the reason is, is look, futures. This is what the futures look like right now. Our, that's, that was crypto. Going to switch up by tomorrow morning? Maybe. It all depends on the news cycle, kind of. And I hate saying that because new. The markets supposedly don't follow the news. The news follows the markets. So let's look at the stock market real quick. What's going on over here? VIX has been doing great. I've taken a. I had. I had a couple call options on the VIX, so I had to um, execute them right, and I took some decent profits. Um, the dollar DXY is at ninety eight point eight. That's because everyone's fleeing into the dollar right now from other fiat currencies. Funny thing though, right? Gold is exploding with the DX, DXY. And I and I kept telling people for like years now, for some fucking reason, uh, for, everyone's like, look at the DXY, it's going up. The gold goes down when DXY goes up. Like, I even had like a fund manager arguing with me. I'm like, no, that, that's, that doesn't, DXY doesn't matter. Both could go up. I've seen it happen plenty of times. Because the DXY is a basket of a bunch of fiat currencies. They're just trading against one another, right? And the, they're just trading against the dollar, all right? The yield has dropped, and it's at 1.725. If the yield... Okay, so if the 10-year yield drops back down to like 1.4 or 1.2, but the short end of the curve rises, although it's pegged temporarily, right? But if the, if the Fed, okay, so if Powell raises rates like 50 basis points and the 10 year, year yield drops, but the 30 year yield rises, then you have a yield, yield curve inversion. And then you have like, it could be anywhere from like a week to like, I don't know, man, like eight months or 12 months before a huge stock market correction. But these, based on history, but that doesn't matter anymore because it's, it's so fake, the entire stock market, that, like, the smallest thing could just prick this bubble. It's already popping, to be honest, so it's popping now. All right, here's the VIX. I would love... So, you know, if things escalate tomorrow and into this week, I mean, a nice pop up into the 40s, maybe to, like, 50 bucks, 56 bucks, that'd be amazing. And um, that would give the excuse for the central banks to stop raising rates, and maybe if it's bad enough, the carnage and the escalation of the of the war, maybe they'll, they'll give them the excuse to start up more stimulus. But that's weird, right? Because commodity prices would go through the roof, and there needs to be a correction. So what I'm trying to say is, these are all the indices, right? Here's S and P 500, Nasdaq, Fang Index, Dow Jones, Russell 2000, Vanguard, Total World Stock Index. This is a big one to watch. Nobody else watches. Um, they're all below their 200-day moving averages. All of them, substantially below them, which is kind of like falling out of the parabola on the on the daily, at least. 
we take it to the weekly we well the vanguard hasn't quite hit the the 100 day move or no is that the 52 that's no, the 100 uh weekly moving average what does s p 500 look like on the weekly yeah that has look as a straight up airdrop to the 100 day 100 weekly moving average that'd be a nice i mean in a in a normal world, it should fall to the 200-week moving average with everything going on, but they won't let it fall that, that low because they can't reinflate it, and it's just absolute carnage. Like, 500 Fortune 100 companies going bust, going belly up. So, look at the S&P 500. Yeah, I mean, easily three more weeks of downside to test around 4,000 on the on the S&P 500. So a correction that bad, right? Another like 10% drop. Is that enough to justify taking rate hikes off the table and then doing more QE? That's why I think they're going to just escalate shit in Europe, guys. They need the excuse. And believe me, the uh, people at the real top here, I, I, they, they look at the markets because... Unfortunately, the West really, really depends on this financialized equities, markets, and bonds. Like, the economy is so, so not real. <laughs> That's why, like, Russia at least, I mean, they don't care about their stock market because their economy is real. That's why they seem weak and everyone on Twitter is like, their GDP is like California's. Like, that doesn't matter. It's all about, can you withstand uh financially hard times because they have real industrial base and real resources right all right so again that's why i think cryptos will fall with the rest of the markets and we have more downside uh, what's what's interesting to me is what are they gonna do about inflation i technically if the market could dump hard enough and it really does revisit the 200 week moving average that does bring down commodity prices and oil and everything because everything kind of dumps with it but then right after that they have to do qe and then everything reinflates the stock market won't i don't think it'll ever make all-time highs ever again if it revisits the 200 week moving average of equities but at least it would keep it you know kind of bouncing around going sideways politically that's like really bad um for the people currently in power but you know, by the end of this year, it doesn't matter. It'll be 150 a, a barrel of oil. Either way. Any way you look at it, that's probably where it's going. Especially since we're not independent and we've shut down pipelines. Um, even if they weren't working, they were just being built. At least we would have them built <laughs> sometime soon. And the market wouldn't factor in future prices of just infinite oil barrel Like... $200 barrel oil. Here's the thing. Europe could handle crazy oil prices because everything's, uh, you know, everyone lives in these cities and the distances aren't that big. But the U.S., I mean, everything depends on freight, you know, these semi-trucks. And everyone drives, like, at least 30 minutes to work. <laughs> I don't know, guys. It's going to be really bad. We're going to see some, some civil unrest, for real. Like, by the, by the end of summer, I don't know. But in the, in the reserves, I how much reserves do we have? I don't know. Either way, some sort of correction has to happen with oil. Uh, if, the mar if the stock market drops another 10%. Maybe a temporary, you know... Uh, because look at this move on oil. This purple line right here is oil. This is a weekly chart. The candlesticks is gold. I'm just showing you the correlation. But oil has ran from the COVID dip almost 500%. That's insane. Let's not let's not include the COVID dip. Let's just include from um, $37 a barrel. Still went up 200%. That's insane. What happened right before the mortgage-backed security crisis in 2008? Look what happened to oil right before that happened. Well, here, the stock market dumped, oil fell, and then it just ran, ran, ran. Or wait, no. No, in 2007, it ran up before the stock market crash. That's kind of what's happening right now. That's the correlation. I'm, oh, that's what I'm trying to warn you guys about. 
like it went up 158 percent okay so let's take it from a nice normal price of oil because oil you know had uh, what did it do it um it went negative so i'm not going to count that but um pentango happened in oil anyways if we take it from a normal price of like let's say 45 a barrel it still ran up 160 percent i mean that's equivalent of what happened in 2007 so if oil corrects heavily right or it has a decent correction back down to like yeah where is it at is this right that's nuts this is u.s oil by the way u.s oil is at 125 a barrel all right well it corrects it back down to like let's say 100 maybe a little bit below to like 95 that should give a decent correction in gold and silver uh, maybe a hundred bucks on gold, hundred fifty bucks on gold, and then whatever on silver, five bucks or something. And then after that, it's just explosion to the upside for the rest of the year and years to come, probably. Like I'm looking at gold, uh, gold, boom, and then just rips high the rest of the year. Oil, nice dip to like ninety five, and then just rips higher. That's what I'm. That's what I'm assuming is going to happen. But that, but that's based off of the fact that the stock market takes a nice dump, like starting tomorrow. And it's been dumping from the all-time high, but continuation <laughs> of this massive correction because we just kind of had a dead cat bounce, right? So here's S&P 500. Let's take it to a daily, see what the charts look like, right? The, look, the all-time high was up here at 4,800. Dead cat bounce. And I called it. I made a video. The thumbnail was a dead cat bouncing. What's this now? This looks like another... This looks like a bearish pennant. Sort of a dead cat bounce again. Okay? And then further down we go. Here's something else really exciting and interesting. Again, I've showed you guys this before. When gold was at its all-time high back in 2011, the GDX and the GDXJ... So the GD the GDX was at sixty five dollars. The GDXJ hit a hundred and seventy two dollars. Where is the GDX and the GDXJ now? GD uh GDX is at thirty seven dollars only. GDXJ the juniors junior mining stocks, it's only down at forty seven bucks. It's all time high. That was at one hundred and seventy two, and the GDX was at more than double 66 bucks okay well gold has made a higher high than its previous all-time high back in 2011 technically these are undervalued by like the mining stocks are undervalued by like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of percent technically so one more dip in gold okay and gold is this orange line right and then it shoots higher and then these two indexes, which track the, the mining sector, GDX, the large cap mining stocks, GDXJ, the juniors, these have, dude, you're going to see face ripping rallies for weeks and months. They have to catch up. They have to catch all the way up with the underlying physical metal. And this is where like you get those 10, 20, 50, sometimes 100 baggers and, and you know, 90 over 90 percent of the time they do nothing and then all of a sudden it's like a crazy bull market for like six months to a year or maybe a couple of years but i mean it was a couple of years back then right it was two years we're we're still in bear market territory for the mining stock absolute bear market they haven't taken off they recently just popped up gdx did but if hopefully they'll smash metals like tomorrow morning and hopefully it's a big smash this week, like 100, 150 bucks on gold, then um, that'll give you the ultimate last dip buying opportunity possibly here. And then just, that's it. You, you just sit back and relax and, you know, take profits on as you need, as you need money to buy whatever you need. And then that's it. I mean, this is the giant, you know, once in a lifetime opportunity wealth transfer. Okay. I was off by a year. <laughs> I thought it would happen in tw uh, or 2021 spring and summer, but it didn't. All right. Well, it, it's probably going to happen now, right? Like there's no reason for it to not do. 
I mean, especially once Powell capitulates and the rest of the central banks around the world, they'll capitulate. Their excuse will be, I don't know, world war, and then that'll be the biggest, you know. It's going to be crazy times, stressful times. People, you could tell people are pissed and stressed out, like, when you go out. So it's it's during these crazy times where you, you know, the oppor- the biggest opportunities, lifetime opportunities are, right? And, you know, when they capitulate with stimulus and more money, QE, printing, uh, cryptos will go back up in the bull market. Hopefully by then, um, you know, Pulse Chain will be out. Also, listen, I don't talk about this because, you know, I can't make videos and give away everything. There's a lot of strategy, and I think I have a winning strategy, and it's a lot of things. But, I mean, you have the opportunity between Hex on Ethereum, Hex on Pulse Chain. You have Pulse X. You have Pulse Chain, right? You have stable coins. You have two. I don't know if USDC will hold its peg, but eventually Liquid Loans will come out with their stable. But hopefully it holds its peg. But it ho- hopefully it holds some sort of peg, right? It won't matter, right? As long as it stays stable wherever. Um, and if you utilize Liquid Loans properly, right? Now, some people want to make it into a job and do... They have these theories where... I don't want to get into it. But trading, right? So all the trading going on, right? Between all of these. And then you're going to have your shit coins, right? And NFTs. A lot of opportunities. I'm talking like insane shit. 100x here, 100x there. 1,000x here, 500x there. Like... <laughs> And you don't want to miss out on that. You just don't. And honestly, you don't have to be trading in and out daily. You don't. I'll be doing that a little bit in the beginning. Why not? Um, you know, take some pocket change and do some day trading. Why not? Just do it for like a month or two. You might uh, have five winning trades in a row and that's it. You're retired. Turn a thousand into a mil. No problem. It's possible. Uh, it, 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 th- this is a once in a life opportunity with Pulse Chain launching. It's possible to do something like that. It really is. Now, if you screw up, you, you know, as long as you're not trading shit coins, you'll be all right. And if you know position sizing, right? Uh, risk management, right? Risk tolerance and management and not being emotional. I'll be putting it out in the alert, okay? So a lot of opportunities, man. It's going to be crazy. Like all of this trading that's going to be going on, is going to pump the crap out of Pulsec because it's deflationary and there's pretty much a buyback burn. Not really, but it, but really, okay. I believe it's not, it's not confirmed yet, but super deflationary. It's literally the supply that's minted is that's it. Same with Pulse, right? Pulse chain. Both are deflationary, but Pulsec's super deflationary. All right. And a lot of money is going to be flowing first into Pulse Chain. Huge rally in Pulse Chain. Huge pent up demand and energy. Then, you know, it's it's going to be crazy. It's going to be wild. So let me give you an example. Like, um, wait, you know what? Let's do it on a chart. Do it on a chart. Pulse Chain rallies. Let's say Pulse X rallies initially, then dumps. Pulse Chain rallies more, then dumps. And Pulse X rallies, and then eventually Hex on Pulse Chain just explodes, goes to ten bucks, or maybe in a different order or something like that, right? And then Hex on Ethereum dumps, then pumps, and then dumps. <laughs> like it's just gonna be crazy, guys. Like, it, and I'm gonna be putting out what I'm doing in the alerts right after I did them, and then well, you know. All you have to do is probably get three trades, and that's an easy 500x. Like 500 times your money, or 1,000 times your money, or 100 times your money. Even that is life-changing, right? So, huge opportunity coming up this spring and summer. Not just in the stock market, but cryptos, right? So, again, doing a fire sale, 49 bucks. Entry fee. And then you get an email invita- inv- invitation and uh, it's 20 bucks a month. All right, guys, until next time.